So hello everybody, welcome to January's uh, Lunch and Learn, the first one of 2023 um, after a successful series uh, kicked off last year in 2022. Today um, I'm going to introduce you to my colleague Dan who's going to give an introduction to FLS scheduling power. So FLS is a powerful tool, it extends and enhances uh, your Dynamics field service solution. Um, so if I'll hand over to Dan and then we can follow up with Q&A at the end of the session. Thank you very much. So welcome, Dan. Uh, yes, thanks, Steve, and good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Dan Snowden. I am the solution director for the Dynamics 365 customer engagement work stream within the HSO UK practice. Um, and today, as Steve mentioned, I'm going to be taking you through our partnership with Fastlean Smart, who, as I'm sure you're all aware from joining this session, uh, that they are a an organization who work exclusively in the sort of the scheduling optimization space. Um, so we're going to be having a look at a, a few areas today. Now, if I just move my slide on there. So the first area we're going to look at is how we can really look at qualifying the use of when FLS becomes a, a, an obvious solution to choose. Um, and, you know, that's because, as I'm sure you're aware, Dynamics 365 customer engagement in terms of field service and the wider platform actually comes with its own scheduling engine capability from a so for some organizations, you may be able to just manually schedule. There's a, a you know a, a semi-automated capability, and there is actually a resource schedule optimization engine that uh, that can run. But you know, it's about identifying the right solution or collection of solutions for your needs. So we'll have a look at some of the reasons why FLS would become the uh, the obvious solution to choose in conjunction with a field service implementation. And, uh, and hopefully that'll give you a bit more information about you know, your journey um, with these platforms going forwards. We'll then look at the operate uh, the options with integrating the platform. So, you know, there's more than just, you know, sending a load of work over and getting a load of bookings back. There's a, there's a several APIs that you can call and, and ways in which the tools can work together. So we'll have a quick overview of those as well. And then we'll wrap up by saying, you know, what is the um, next steps for your organizations to take if you are interested in you know, a journey with HSO and FLS taking uh, field service and schedule optimization forwards. So if you can hold all questions to the end, but feel free to put them in the chat, we will come back at the uh, the end of the session and, and go through any questions you have. But let's move on now to the uh, the qualification area of the platform. So fundamentally, and, and this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imaginations, this is just some of the, the high priority items that I, I feel are worth mentioning. In terms of the total number of resources, so as I mentioned before, um, RSO does have optimization capabilities, but one of the uh, things that you have to take into account is that as you start adding volume of jobs and you add numbers of resources, the um, calculations become, you know, infinite, infinitus in taking it forward. You know, they, they grow exponentially um, in terms of the options that, uh, that a booking could be placed in. So it's about making sure that you have the right tool that can handle those volumes. And typically, we would say that if you've got up to 40 resources, then a pure dynamic solution is more suitable. Um, but once you've gone beyond that number, then you're probably looking at something like FLS um, to, to make sure that you can fully utilize that uh, optimization power going forwards. Now, that's not a hard and fast rule. There are still going to be some organizations that um, RSO and field service is still the right solution for more than 40 resources. And similarly, there are going to be organizations who will still want to leverage FLS, even though they've got less than those resources. But as a rule of thumb, when we're qualifying our opportunities, we generally tend to look at that engineer account to, uh, to identify that. On to the next one is all about resource location. So those of you who've looked at the Dynamics 365 field service option will know that when it comes to identifying your resources, you're quite limited in being able to specify the starting and ending location of those engineers um, in terms of saying it's from the resources address or from an organizational unit like a warehouse or a, you know, a supply location or even just being location agnostic. The real world generally tends to have a much more fluid approach to the resource locations thinking around you know the the need of highlands and islands up in scotland you may not have a permanent resource up there but you may be looking into your schedule to see 
you know, what week of the year is suitable to to place an, an engineer up in a hotel and do as many jobs up there as we can in the most efficient route. And being able to have a tool and a user interface where you can manage that much more flexibly um, and have those options available to you is, again, the step change between where you would get to from a, a Dynamics 365 out the box perspective and where FLS would bring that added value. The next one is uh, the constraints around job allocation. So think of this as all of the different parameters that you want to be able to evaluate when you're identifying who the most suitable resource is. From a, a, a Microsoft perspective, you know, we do have some capability around there in terms of skill sets, availability. Um, you know, there is the historical uh, information around uh, route planning and, and, and traffic potential uh, disruption there. But you know, this is where something like FLS really comes into its own because you've got a, a wide range of different available options here in terms of thinking about, you know, forecasted weather or, you know, customers opening hours and, uh, and, and looking at all of these different elements that can be put into that engine to really, you know, get much more control and certainty over the efficiency of your scheduling engine. Um, so there's, there's that factor that needs to be always taken into account as well. If we move on, uh, optimization performance is the next area. So, you know, for those of you who've had a look at the Microsoft version and the RSO engine, there is a, a, a feeling generally that it's not quite the most responsive tool. You know, it does perform well and it does have the, the capabilities that, it, that you need from that. But, you know, the when you look at the way in which FLS can do that in terms of thinking, you know, um, around how quickly this, this engine can run, where we can see performance of sub-second loading, you know, as as things change over the course of the day. And that's, you know, where we have this in-day job management at the end as well. You have a clear board of everything that is happening over the day and how jobs are now in jeopardy of being able to be completed as per the plan. You also have events that you have no control over. You know, an engineer traveling suddenly has a puncture or a breakdown or gets stuck in the snow like we've had in the last couple of days. Um, or even, you know, one or two engineers ringing in sick. In a, in, without an, edge, uh, an engine that can um, perform effectively and efficiently with a sub-second loading time, you'd be looking at that being an incredibly disruptive program where you've got um, operators working in the back office trying to you know, fix square pegs into round holes. This tool is, is absolutely incredible when it comes to that capability. It, work, it does everything from memory. So if an engineer rings in sick, for those jobs that aren't committed to a certain resource, throws everything back up in the air and plonks it back down again so you can have that flexibility. You may have committed to a date and a time, but if you haven't committed to the resource, then it can move things around to take into account who is the best resource at that point. And, you know, behind all of this is the ability for it to understand every single segment of road in the UK and know at different times of day how busy that road segment is likely to be. I think it's over 7 million road segments if you think about a sat-nav and when you go past one junction, it flicks onto the next turn that you need to make. So it can understand traffic patterns. It can understand different road segments and start to organize things like um, if you've got a job in a town center and several jobs on the outskirts, it will know to reorganize those jobs so that you may travel a bit longer in terms of mileage. But if you were to do that first job and first thing in the morning, you're going to hit rush hour. So it'll put that one at lunchtime when the, the roads into the town center are much more clear of traffic so that it'll work these things out and make sure that you are providing the most efficient journey. And I'll talk a little bit more about the, the way in which we can sort of prioritize our selections when we go into the integration piece next. But that's just a, a five or so high level areas where the FLS tool really gives us a lot of power and, and supercharges, as, as the title of the session goes, supercharges that, um, that field service implementation that we're putting in with Dynamics. So in terms of the integration, I mentioned before that it, you know it's not just about requirements and bookings. Um, there is several APIs there that we can utilize. So if you think about, you know, you've got your Dynamics environment here, you've got your uh, Logic Apps and your Azure services and all of your APIs and the Dataverse and all of these capabilities that the Microsoft platform brings, the FLS tool has all of its own APIs that are managed as well. And the first of those that I'm going to talk about is the fact that it can be a, a tool that can connect to your people management software. So thinking about, you know, HR systems or other capabilities that you utilize, like maybe a workday or something like that, 
It can look at um, making sure that it synchronizes all of that information about your resources, their working shift patterns, you know, their skill sets, and, and make sure that all of that information is synchronized between whatever tool you're using in the back office and how you are leveraging field service and, uh, and, and FLS as a, as a joint combined, combined tool to, to, to optimize effectively. It also has the ability to, to process multiple jobs. So, you know, there's a, as we come on the next bit, there's different mechanisms for scheduling. Um, the one that we're talking about here is where you literally just want to throw requirements at it as they come in. That might be in bulk in terms of a data upload or um, getting some information from a, a partner that you are providing services to, in which case it needs to be able to sort of understand capacity and then throw the jobs over and make sure that it's dealing with them all in, in, the, in consideration of one big piece of work. But we also have this sort of request and suggest approach as well. So think about uh, a typical service organization where you've got your agent on the telephone and they are speaking to the customer and they're saying, right, you know, what sort of dates and times would be suitable for you? Or, you know, do we need to take into account the school run or you work part time on Wednesday afternoons so you can only really do mornings? You know, all of these factors can be taken in and we can use this request and suggest process that says there's all of my constraints. Click book and it'll go away to the engine and present us with potentially multiple options, all from within the, the work order form within Dynamics. And those options can be prioritized. So you can see a range of options that are from the, the point of view of the most preferable to yourself versus most preferable to the customer. And that, that's done through a scoring mechanism through the FLS algorithm that can take all of those constraints I managed in the previous slide. I mentioned, sorry, in the previous slide and then provide a scoring. And that scoring basically says this, you know, the higher the score, the more suitable it is for us. It means the engineers working closer to home. The engineer is having to travel less or is doing less mileage in their company vehicle um, versus, you know, towards the other end of the scale. It means traveling more. It means sending an engineer from further away, um, but it is more aligned to what the customer is actually required in terms of the exact date and time that they want. And it fits in and we can find that. So the, the operator can then make an educated decision as to which one of those options they pick while they're on the telephone. And, it, you know, all of that that I've just explained and taken a few minutes to explain is done you know in in less than 30 seconds within the, uh, the, the the tool so you can really see how not only are you improving the processes but you are vastly improving the customer experience as well because they feel like they're getting listened to but you are still taking into account how you are wanting to run as an efficient business as well okay Obviously, you know, when we're when we're talking about connecting field service up with FLS, you, you take into account the fact that field service comes with its own mobile app. Um, and, you know, at this point in time, you know, we're, we're actually working in several projects where we're, we're, we're building all of this capability as well for, for other organizations. So the engineer utilizes field service mobile from a D365 perspective on any of their tablets or phones they have. They change a the job from um, scheduled to in progress. Instantly that change is made back in Dynamics, which instantly triggers that, uh, that call through the API to update the schedule board within FLS. So as I mentioned before, the board is continually being updated and can continually be refreshed if your settings so demand, um, so that you can continually make sure that jobs are being completed as per the plan. Um, and, and you have then clear visibility of jeopardy management, um, but also that you can start making certain decisions for any um, jobs that evolve to the point where they can't be done as promised and you can start managing by exception um, and, and have full confidence that the engine is doing what it needs to do to take everything else out of the hands of your operators. Okay. And finally, it's, you know, making sure that we've got that dynamic ability to change. So as I've just said, with the mobile status updates and, and how the day evolves, there can be external factors that can very significantly affect your ability to, to complete the jobs that you thought you were going to complete at the beginning of the day. So it's making sure that when unpredictable things like breakdowns or illness happens, the board can very quickly throw everything up in the air, make sure that it meets all of your commitments and plonk it back down to any resource that, that can do it. And you've then got full you know, confidence and in, 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 uh, in, the, in the fact that you're still going to be able to meet all of those commitments. And for anything that it can't then schedule, as I mentioned, you then manage that by exception. It can tell you which um, which reasons or which parameters it can't quite meet to be exact, but then give you suggestions as to how it can schedule it to someone else who may not be 
the perfect fit. It may be that we have to get in touch with the customer and say that they'll be half an hour later. It's better than just telling the customer you can't do it. Similarly, it might be that you have to make a conscious decision to send someone from a different territory to somewhere that they wouldn't ordinarily work. But if that is a decision you're willing to take, then you can just click a button and it'll then schedule that piece of work. So it's helping you every step of the way, but it's also incredibly efficient at doing what it needs to do automatically as well. Okay, so that uh, that kind of rounds up all of the the, the 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 sort of factors around qualifying why you would use it and when you would use it and and how you can then incorporate it into a, a bigger picture with regards to your field service management software or you know simply any to any capability within the dynamics 365 customer engagement platform that you want to enable scheduling for so if you're a service scheduling operation or or you know you you offer appointment slots or you you work with facilities all of these uh, capabilities can be turned on using what we call universal resource scheduling, and then that can leverage the integration into the FLS tool as well. So you don't just have to think inside the box of a field service organization, a break fix model. Any requirement where you have the need to schedule resources, either in a, in in situ in a in a you know like a, a garage type thing, or in offices, or actually sending people out in the field, then this combination of Dynamics customer engagement. An FLS is, is definitely a powerful one. And so in terms of how you can then take what I've said today and, and start your journey, I appreciate you haven't seen any software today, but you know, by reaching out to your HSO account manager or to myself directly, we can definitely facilitate you know, a, a, and, and request that sort of demo scenario where you can physically see how these tools talk to each other and also understand the, the, the breadth and depth of capabilities that the FLS tool has. We can then you know, work with you to identify an engagement model with ourselves and, and with FLS to, to really maximize the value that you can get out of exploring this program or even beginning something and taking it forwards. You know, there, there are many different engagement models that as a partner of Microsoft, we can bring to the, to the party and we can really find the balance between you getting a real strong diagnostic stick out of it and us getting a, um, an, an ability to push you forward and identify you know that minimum viable product or or a, a short medium or long-term roadmap to really uh, take care, uh, take advantage of these pieces of software we can also leverage our relationships to facilitate an introduction between yourselves and the the right people at FLS and and, and really you know get you past that first hurdle of, of, of having to sort of establish those connections yourself. We've been working very closely with FLS now for, for a couple of years and we've we've got really good relationships as an organization and we can certainly start those conversations at the right level for you immediately. Um, as, as, as soon as, you know, later this week or early next week, we could be getting you in rooms and or on calls and having those conversations. And there's also the ability to then leverage FLS's offers. Now, obviously it, it's not for me to go into too much detail on these, but um, FLS have a number of their own uh, commercial offers in which they can provide things like scheduling tests and trials of their solution. Um, in particular, the scheduling tests are, are incredibly interesting. You know, organizations don't just don't realize just how inefficient their, their, their processes are uh, based on the data that is provided. And those scheduling tests can really give you that strength of business case to take this forward. And, and finally then, you know, come to an agreement with all of us and, and move forwards into a, into a journey where we, we can implement all of this software together. And I think at that point, um, I've, I've kind of come to the end of my very rapid 20 minute session there um, and like throw the, throw the, uh, throw open the questions to the audience, really, if you've got any. Or Steve, if you've got any, any wrap up that you want to do. Thanks very much, Dan. Um, yeah, we'll just wrap up and then we'll move on to a quick Q&A session. So thanks very much for the introduction and overview of uh, Fastlean Smart. Much appreciated and gives us a, a, a high level indication of, I suppose, where FLS takes over from the standard capability within the Dynamics uh, solution. So thanks very much for that. Just um, a reminder for everybody that coming up 16th of February, the next session will be focusing on data analytics, which uh, uh, you know we'll, we'll have some use cases about what you could be doing with your data, how to manipulate, how to extract, and how to make your data uh, uh, you know, an investment for your overall business. So um, we look forward to seeing you on that one. And also just as a reminder, March the 9th this year, date for your diaries, it is the HSO Customer Day. 
um, invitations should be winging their ways out to you um, this week if you've not already received them. So a uh, date for your diary, March the 9th. And with that, I'll say thank you very much, Dan, and I'll just draw this presentation to a close.